Hey, everybody, welcome to the Tech Founder Circle post party panel discussion. We just finished another uh, great collaborative meeting with tech founders. And one of the top discussions, one of the top challenges, the questions that are being discussed among our group right now is around company vision and values. How do you stay true to your company vision and values? And how does doing that impact product and revenue? Uh, employee retention, attracting top talent, and getting long-term buy-in with your employees. Um, and so this is, we've got this fantastic panel with us here today. And uh, I, who wants to kick us off? Who wants to start with this topic? How has this impacted you in your experience? And what advice would you give for people out there? Eric, do you want to start us? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek and finding your why and your why is your vision and your values. Without knowing that, you can't really build anything on top of it, right? Uh, there's no direction. There's no, there's no, um, you know, you don't know why you're doing anything, right? You don't even know what the core uh, value is. And so that's something I spent a lot of time with Credo is figuring out what our vision was, right? What is our values? And we came down to, you know, Credo's vision is we want to be able to grow anything anywhere. Um, and we settled on that and it took us a long time, but it's definitely led to all of these long-term effects that you're talking about, product, revenue, attracting top talent, right? So I have had, I've been fortunate where, you know, your vision and values is culture. That's what it is, right? And one of the thing about culture is you shouldn't have to go and tell people what your culture is and this is what you need to do to be part of the culture. And instead it should just be, this is the culture. Do you align with this? And if you do, then you're probably gonna come to me and be like, I want to be part of Credo, right? And that's exactly the effect we've seen is I've had had industrial designers, right? Come up to me and like, hey, I don't really like this ID firm I'm with anymore. I love what you guys are doing. I want to be part of this, right? Where do you think I could fit in? Growth marketers, same thing. You know, when I'm on pitch competitions, I have people come up to me after just talking about how they think what we're doing is so cool and that they align with our beliefs, right? So there's no need for me to be like, this is our culture, this is what we believe in. You already believe in it. We can now just join our minds together and go ahead and work together on creating this company that has this belief value. But it has to be something so core, right? So this is so core in us that's reflected in everything we do. So why is our business model the way it is? It's because we really do care about the environment, sustainability, and being eco-friendly, right? So we took efforts to figure out how can we make this a financially fiscal company, but also reduce e-waste, reduce packaging spend, reduce consumption, reduce all these issues that we've experienced our own with other direct-to-consumer products. Uh, same with, you know, We've taken just so much time figuring out packaging, right? Why did we opt for no ink in our packaging? Well, because ink's horrible for the environment and it actually makes your cardboard harder to recycle. And so it turns out, well, we're the first company now to laser etch all of our products on cardboard, which turns out to be a huge innovation. And now we're getting design awards for it, right? But those are things that we didn't want. We didn't intend to have that as a result. Our intention was we stand by our beliefs and values, and this is the proof, right? We're showing you, and you don't need to even read anything on our website. You can just look at the experience that you're getting from us, and you're already a believer of what, and by becoming a believer, that's where you get the long-term revenue and the long-term customer, right? Uh, is because now they are also aligned with your culture and beliefs. And so our whole thing was, look, our product helps novice and beginner and intermediate um, plant growers, right? Or gardeners. For the experts though, they might not see a lot of value in what we do because they understand what to do, but we changed our story that, hey, we're not just helping people grow plants. We're also, you're helping us collect plant data and you're helping us do plant research and plant science. You're advancing this. And so by switching that message now, now we have the experts being like, oh, I will love to contribute what I know and contribute to the science. And so even though I don't need your product, I'm still going to be a customer of your product because of that fact, right? Um, and so, yeah, so that all came from our why and our vis vision values and understanding that really well allowed us to create a whole orbit really easily and really quickly. And it's very easy to talk about. Love that example, Eric. Yeah. And I just wanna clarify something for those watching. When you say you changed your messaging, you're not saying that you changed it to fit the people, you changed it to better match your original vision. And I think that's important. You, you don't go into it trying to be a chameleon and, and 
reverse backward what people want. You make a stand first and then the universe brings to you all of this abundance, which is rad. That's correct. Natalie, what, what thoughts do you have? Yeah, I think Eric, that was so awesome. Everything you did. Can you just feel his energy around it? I kind of want to work for him Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not looking for a job, right? <laughs> but it's because we can feel it. So I just kind of want to pick apart what I saw Eric do so that it's replicatable for everyone. Um, you can tell that Eric is super clear on his why. You can tell that he really loves his product, right? And you can tell that um, he mentioned some of the things, some of their values. Um, but I bet that everyone in the office can tell you what the values are. If your employees can give your mission statement or your list your values um, in impersonating Eric's voice, we know that Eric has said it almost enough. Okay, so we see this, how this, like just even the background that we see with Eric, right? Everything is, he's living into his why with every single thing that he does. Right. And that's all about making this product that you love and generating the re revenue that you want. What we tend to do is, OK, um, so here's the product I love. Right. But some people are saying that they're wanting this and I need revenue. So I'm going to change and do this. And maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't. Maybe I start to create a business I actually don't even like anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So you start from this core, Paul mentioned earlier about, he knows he's a $10 million business guy. And if it gets bigger than that, he doesn't like it anymore, right? So really knowing those things about yourself and staying true to them, that's how you create a product that people love and will generate more revenue. It's not changing it to suit their needs. It's of course, listening to customer feedback, but always making those changes very deliberately in your why. And I'm assuming these, <clears throat> your tech companies, um, maybe you're on the small side. I don't know. Do we have any huge companies, hundreds of employees? Okay. So this is really important with small companies is that you create the business that you still love, that you still want to be in charge of five years from now that you don't regret. Right. And so everything feeds from that. I'm always addressing my why when I address every issue. So this is also how Eric talked about this, about attracting top talent. Right. When you know what Eric is all about, I bet Eric's employees go and tell people, hey, I think you should work here. And here's why. So if you haven't done this, do this in your own business. Find out why people like working for you. Just go ask them. Have a little stay interview. Why are you staying? What do you love about this? What would you tell your friends? How would you describe our company in one or two sentences to a friend who's looking for a job? So that you know what it's like, where you know what your culture is actually playing out as. And then you can start to make those adjustments and um, centering back into your why, why you got started, why you loved your product and be able to talk about it with that level of excitement like we've seen Eric do. Those are some of my thoughts. <laughs> that was a great example, Eric. I'm glad everyone got to see that, like see it all in action and how it plays out into every crevice of your business. Excellent. Yeah. What, what are some other thoughts out there? What experiences do you all have? Dave, would you like to jump in? Sure. We, we have a set of core values and we don't recite them very often and they're not even on our website, but I think we're, we're true to them. And I think it, it plays out in our company and they are, uh, you know, create real value. There's a lot of, a lot of people, especially in consulting who would just like to get a gig where people have to pay them money. They don't care about value, but one of our things is, you know, you really need to create real incremental value. <clears throat> and the second thing, we call it share equitably, which means if we're creating value, some of it should be going back to the client. I mean, they're the ones getting the value, but um, a lot of sharing amongst our employees. So the whole pay scheme is, is sharing the extra value we created with our employees. <clears throat> uh, and then the rest of the values are, uh, around collaboration. We have something we call one voice where uh, you should argue a lot amongst ourselves, but have one voice with the client. And then uh, and the last one's just have fun. We're not here to suffer. 
and those you know they just play out in our how the business runs i think can i just say one more thing these are also key to accountability so dave or all of you think about what your values are and your mission and when you have an employee who is doing something you don't like the accountability conversation is all about hey we you know one of our values is sharing and what i saw you do isn't in line with those values that in the onboarding process you signed up for right when right. you show up to work you are agreeing to this culture right, right? right. you're right. agreeing to these things and so it makes accountability so simple yeah when we can just say what i'm seeing is not in alignment with who we are and so that has to change yeah. and it just yeah. that accountability conversation writes itself when you have those values really um communicated well to your team yeah and that's a great point you know i for us, it shows up a lot in recruiting. You know, we can tell who we're not going to hire because they don't line up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I saw, you, sh you should all check this out. Netflix, they have a job, op a job posting that it's just, it's 11 pages of their culture. <laughs> it's amazing. It's by the end, you know exactly what you're getting into. And you know, if you're a good fit for that company, that's another way that for sure they're going to attract top talent. I was really impressed. Just check it out. I've, I've been a part of a startup um, that was growing pretty rapidly. Uh, we had just taken on about $15 million of funding. Um, we were growing from about 50 employees up to 100. So we were doubling in size. And one of the things that we had to do was figure out, you know, how do we make hiring decisions? How do we, how do we decide who it is that, you know, when, when a, a group of, of um, applicants come through and they look very similar, you know, in terms of the accomplishments that they have or their backgrounds, you know, how do we ensure that um, we're building intentionally the team that we want to? And that's where values can really come into play um, is, you know, when you have, six or seven, you know, key statements or key words of which, you know, um, is an important and intentional part of how you want to grow, then it makes the decision-making process significantly easier and it can be communicated across several teams. So you don't necessarily have to rely on, you know, that hiring man, you know, the hiring manager um, to, you know, feel as if they are, you know, pigeonholed in any way. When you communicate what your values are and the entirety of the teams know them across all departments, you can really uh, ensure that you're uh, mapping to a certain, you know, intentional kind of, of group that, and you can also, again, to the accountability point that you made, um, that, you, that you made, Natalie, I think that that's a really great way that you can say, hey, this is this, we all agreed to show up and do X, Y, and Z. And this is why we're here. And, you know, let's keep pushing for this. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And with hiring, I love the, the phrase, you'll, you'll like working here if, and you won't like working here if. And that's where you bring in a lot of those culture things that they might not know about yet. Well, it's, you know, folks, it's obvious that we can be talking about this for a long time. Um, and I love all the insight that you guys have uh, brought to the table. So thank you so much. We do unfortunately have to wrap up. Um, the last point that just I wanted to make with what you were saying, Eric, and what I've seen is that when everyone understands your values, I always think of all these holes in the business. There's all these things that you're not as a founder thinking about. And a lot of times as founders, People put so much pressure on you to think about how you want to live your values. But when you've hired people to your values, Eric, you mentioned your packaging. Like that is such a good example of a small hole where somebody in a company understood what the value was, understood what the mission was and looked at the packaging and said, wait a second. And now you're in this innovative place. And you as a founder, you can't think of all those things. So your best bet is to communicate the mission, right. vision, values, because you know that if you do that effectively, you are now accessing the minds of everybody. Um, and so another, another fantastic example. 
Um, thank you guys so much for this fantastic discussion. I could talk about this for an hour. This was so great. Good job. And I hope to see you guys at the next Tech Founder Circle. Um, we'll see you next month. Thanks, everybody. Great. Take care. Thanks.